Well, welcome back to another game of On Base Baseball. My name is Brian Hafferkamp. I'm the designer and creator of On Base Baseball, and it is published by the Clark and Edison Gaming Company. Now, On Base Baseball is a sabermetric-driven baseball game, and I am going to be finishing off this replay. Uh, I'm currently in the sixth inning of a replay between the 1980 Detroit Tigers and the 1980 Kansas City Royals. You can see that our game here is at 3-1 uh, is the score. It's actually, uh, uh, I want to say, it's actually 5-1. So we just had a two-run home run from uh, Larry Parrish. Lance Parrish? Lance Parrish. Um, Parrish for the Tigers. <laughs> the catcher for the Tigers. Uh, just cranked a two-run homer out to dead center field, and it's now 5-1. Uh, the score just hasn't been uh, calculated and tallied yet. Uh, you can see the um, the 1980s game engine chart here. And we also have a dice roller down here that's been configured uh, here in the dice section. I'm using Green Fox. Green Fox is an Excel-based uh, scorekeeping application. And not only does it keep score for an individual game like this, but you can actually... Uh, make a historical league so you can do an entire league uh, replay or you can do just a team replay like if you're playing if you just wanted to play the Detroit Tigers uh, you could play only that team's games so it's got a lot of extensibility Mike Ignatowski is the developer for this and he's put a lot of work into it over the last six to eight months and has created a, a wonderful application he's listening to people who are using it and incorporating a lot of things into it. So uh, there's a ton of options here for configuration, for help. Uh, when you get into the league mode, it's really extensive and can do some really fun and interesting things. At this point, uh, we have Dennis Leonard in the game. Um, I'm going to leave him in the game at this point, even though it's 5-1, and Jack Morris is on the mound for Detroit. So uh, not a lot happening in this game. We had a run-scoring single from Summers. We had an RBI... or uh, I'm sorry, a single from Summers, and he was knocked in uh, with an, an RBI from Parrish. Parrish actually has knocked in two runs. He knocked in this one as well, I believe. And um, he's got the two-run homer here. Uh, another single up here, Kurt Gibson is one for three, one for two. Um, we've had a double from Wagner, who is a shortstop. Uh, not much going on. Willie Wilson walked and stole a base. Uh, other than that, not a lot is happening here against Jack Morris. Morris, a 399 FIP. Uh, his stamina is 30. And then uh, Dennis Leonard, a 390 uh, FIP with a stamina of 31. So at this point, he's at 18. Uh, <clears throat> so this would be 27, 26, 25. So he's at 25 batters. We're going to see if he can get out of this inning. He's got two outs. Uh, just gave up the two-run home run. And uh, I'm using the um, 1980s game engine chart over here. We're going to combine that with our dice roller here and be able to play on-base baseball with a digital presentation, which is, is kind of fun. So uh, let's finish out this inning. This is uh, Peters. He is playing right field, and he is currently over 2. He struck out in his last at-bat. So this is going to be a 56. So we're looking at the uh, fifth first. So 390 is column 2, and there's nothing for 56, and so we go over to uh, Peters, who I've got all of our um, batting defense and speed right here. So you can see his batting runs is a 4, and so a 56 uh, to a 4 is going to be a strikeout. Uh, so that is going to be a strikeout looking, and when we bring up, we click the middle of this, it brings up all of our options here. And then we can simply choose strikeout. This is going to be the end of an inning. It's the third out, so we toggle the end of an inning. And what that does is it calculates all of our score down here. So you can see they scored two in the sixth, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It is five to one, uh, Detroit over Kansas City. Kansas City looking to do something, anything, against Jack Morris. Uh, Jack Morris not even to 18 batters yet. He's basically just kind of mowed down the... Uh, mow down these uh, <laughs> who are they? The Kansas City Royals. Okay, uh, first up for the Royals is going to be Frank White and then UL Washington in the back to the top with Willie Wilson. 
So uh, again, Jack Morris is in column two. So a 55 is going to be a zero. Uh, 55 to a minus 18, that's a line out or foul out if the D9 is a five or greater. It's a three, so that's going to be a line out to the third baseman. And we're looking at the green die over here. So line out to third. And then when we have uh, UL Washington coming to the plates, he is a minus two batting runs. And remember, in on base, we're looking at the lowest number first. So this is a 34. 34 is nothing out of the pitcher. The only thing here in this uh, column two is going to be a 24. So unless we come across a 24, we can just sort of move over to the batter. So a 34 to a minus two is going to be a long single. <clears throat> For UL Washington, he's got a running speed of seven. So that's going to turn into a double, and that goes to center field. So Washington in scoring position for Willie Wilson. Willie Wilson with 11 batting runs. 22 is going to be a double, and that is into left field off the wall. And that will be a two-bagger for Willie Wilson, and that puts a run on the board. As coming home to score is UL Washington. So Willie Wilson... Uh, makes it 5-2 to two as they begin to get to Jack Morris just a little bit. Hal McRae standing in, bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, 14 to a 14 batting runs is going to be another base hit. Uh, this goes to center field. And single into center field. Uh, that's going to push the runner to third base, but Willie Wilson is a speed of 9. Uh, we have this as a 1-9, to nine, so... We can roll it, but he's going to score. Uh, so he comes in to score. We give him an RBI, and that's an RBI single. Now makes it 5-3. to three. So uh, still only one out in the inning, and George Brett coming to the plate. Uh, 25 to George Brett. It's going to be a fly out. That's to left field down the line. We need to do an error check. No error on the play, so it's going to be a catch in left field. And that'll be the second out of the inning as Hal McRae stays at first base. Brings up Willie Aikens. Aikens is one for two. He hit into a double play in his last at bat. He's going to get a little ground ball here. That goes out to short. No problem at shortstop as we're going to go the long way. And that will end the inning. But the Royals do pick up two runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. And it's now 5-3 Royals. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, Go for a. We're at 26 batters. We'll let him. We'll let Leonard go one more inning. See if he can get through this uh, bottom and top of the order. Uh, so he's facing off against uh, Wagner, Lou Whitaker, and Kurt Gibson. A 23 to a minus four batting runs is going to be a ground out with an error check. So that's right back to the pitcher, and that's actually going to be an E1. So we say E1, and that's going to be there. And so Wagner is on uh, after the pitcher's error from Dennis Leonard. Leonard with the pitch to Lou Whitaker. Lou Whitaker minus 17 batting runs. Uh, he's going to have a ground out with an error check. That's right back to the pitcher again. This time he picks it up, and we're going to make the... Uh, I've been playing this so that I'm uh, rolling against the batter speed to see if there's a double play on a regular ground out. So we're going to assume the out at second base, so Widener's going to be out as the pitcher turns and throws to second. Uh, and let's see if they get Whitaker. If it's a 1-4, to four, uh, his speed, then he'll be safe. Otherwise, if it's 5-9, to nine, he'll be out. And it's a 1, and he beats the play at first. So that's going to be a fielder's choice. And you select a runner that was put out if there was an out that was made, and that is to the pitcher. So we're going to have fielder's choice to 1. And then it automatically calculates this guy as being out. So we don't have to, uh, we have some automated um, outs and base running situations now, which has been a nice addition uh, to the Green Fox score sheet. So we've got a runner at first base, Lou Whitaker. He's only a four speed, not a threat to score or a threat to steal. So Kirk Gibson to the plate. And 11 is going to be a walk to Kirk Gibson. Oh. Actually, it's a zero. That's going to be a home run. And that is out deep to right center field. And Kirk Gibson goes yard. And that's going to chase 
our man from the plate or from the uh, from the game. As two runs come in to score, uh, two RBIs for Kirk Gibson. Uh, he would have been he would have scored, so that's no issue there. And let's go ahead and get a new pitcher here. Let me put this on hold, and I'll bring in a new pitcher. All right, the new pitcher is going to be Marty Patton. Patton comes into the game. He's got a 10 stamina, 368 FIP, so he'll be pitching out of column two as well. And the way we indicate a new pitcher here is we click on this little top one here, and that indicates a new pitcher coming into the game. Uh, he'll be facing off against Kemp. Uh, Kemp is, what is he, 0 for 2. He's got a, a one hit by pitch. So uh, with one out and nobody on, it's now 7-3 after the two-run homer from Kirk Gibson, and Kemp stands in a 56 to a 22 batting runs he is going to be a walk. So promptly comes in and issues a walk to the first man he faces. It's Richie Hebner now. Hebner to the plate. He's in 11 batting runs, 11 batting runs, and 35 he is going to be a strikeout. So that'll be out number two. <coughs> And it's now uh, Jason Thompson to the play. Thompson, a minus five batting runs in 1980. He is uh, 0 for 3. He double he hit into a double play. He also got on via an error. Uh, 25 is going to be, what is he, a minus five? 25 is going to be a fly out to right center field. Uh, there's no error on the play, and that's going to be the third out of the inning. And we will toggle the end of the inning. You can see that it totals up our scores here. It's now 7 to 3. Uh, Detroit over <clears throat> Kansas City in a battle of Midwestern teams here in the American League in 1980. Jack Morris is going to face off against Lecoq, Quirk, and Hurdle for the Kansas City Royals. This will be the bottom of the seventh inning. We got Jack Morris. He can go 30 batters. He's not even to 27 yet. So he's going to stay in the game and face Pete Lecoq. Uh, Lecoq is... One for two, he had a single to right field in his last at-bat. He's got a 15 here. A 15 to a minus 10 he is going to be a ground out, and that is to the first baseman. No problem at first as he pitches to the pitcher that's covering, and that'll be out number one. Brings up Jamie Quirk. Uh, Quirk is a minus three batting runs, and 11 is going to be a home run as Jamie Quirk gets a hold of one. Rips it out to right center field, and that one is going to clear the wall for a solo home run for Jamie Quirk. And that brings up Clint Hurdle. Hurdle is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Uh, 26 to a plus 9 will be a ground out, and that's a little tapper in front of the plate to the catcher. No problem. As he calls inside, throws it inside, and that's going to be out number 2 as they get him at first base. Brings up Frank White. Frank White is 0 for 2. He lined out to the third baseman his last at bat. A 13 is going to be a ground out, and that goes to the shortstop. No problem at short, and that will be out number 3. But Kansas City does get one back on the solo home run from uh, Jamie Quirk, and that will take us to the top of the eighth inning. It's 7 to 3, or 7 to 4 now, our score. Uh, Detroit at Kansas City, and they are uh, going to bat with a three run lead. Brings up Summers, Parrish, and Peters for Detroit. Um, they are facing off against Marty Patton. Patton, uh, again, pitching out of column two, so his only uh, chance to affect the play is going to be on a 24, basically just a league average pitcher. Uh, 14 to a 21 batting runs is going to be a base hit. And that's going to go into left center field. Uh, the speed for Summers is only a 3, so he's not going to try to take a, another base. And you can do the location on the singles if you want, or if you don't want to, you can just do a single. Uh, Parrish is uh, 2 for 3. He's got a double and a home run and three RBIs. Definitely uh, vying for player of the game. He's a 15 batting runs. 45 is going to be a long single, 
and that is to left field. That's going to push the runner all the way to third base. And he is going to stop at first. He only has a five speed, but that's going to push the runner all the way to third. Could have done that programmatically uh, as well. So the way you do that is uh, you come in here, um, you clear this guy, so clear the result, put him back to first base, and what you would do is you would say this is a single, and that goes to left field, and here it says single or double runner advance, so you can go X, that's one base, or one plus one, which is what we actually have, and so you go like that, and it advances your base runners automatically. Uh, brings up uh, Peters. Peters with two on and nobody out. He is a four batting runs. And 11 is going to be another home run. A gopher ball given up by Patton as Peters takes him out of the park into right center field. That's going to be a three run jack. And that will be to right field. And that is going to be a three RBI home run. It's now 10 to four as Detroit pours it on here at the end of the game. It was just a uh, Pretty, pretty well played game up to this point, um, and it's going to be Wagner to the plate. Patton's just going to take it on the chin. I think this is a ground out that goes to shortstop, and no problem at short. This will be just the first out of the inning, and that's a huge ouch. Um, so three runs in, one out, and it's Lou Whitaker to the plate. He was on via a fielder's choice in his last at bat. Uh, Forty four to a minus seventeen is going to be a walk. So Sweet Lou on base with a one-out walk. And that's going to bring up Kirk Gibson for the fifth time in this game. He had a two-run jack his last at-bat. He's going to ground out here. This is right back to the pitcher. Again, we're going to assume this out at second base. So let's roll against Kirk Gibson's four speed. It's a three, and he's going to just beat out the throw. And there is no double play. So we go pitcher here and uh, no runner advance. So that's going to be actually a fielder's choice, sorry. So this runner is the one who was put out. And we do a fielder's choice uh, to the pitcher. So runner at first base and Kemp to the plate. He walked in his last at bat. A 16 is going to be a deep fly ball, but not deep enough. This goes uh, pushes the right fielder all the way back to the right field corner. And I believe there are two outs. So that will be the uh, third out of the inning. <clears throat> and you can see all the scoring just about coming here in the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning uh, for the t for the Tigers. And uh, Kansas City really having a tough time here against Jack Morris, who is approaching his stamina, but he's not quite there yet. Even if he does, he would just drop down to this column here. So he may have a complete game uh, as long as he doesn't falter here at the end. He'll be facing off against UL Washington, Willie Wilson, and Hal McCray to start the eighth inning. A 34 to a minus two is going to be a long single, and with his speed, UL Washington actually turns that single into a double. So he will wind up at second base. He's got back-to-back -back doubles in it and back-to-back -back at bats. Uh, 45. Uh, this goes to Willie Wilson. He's in 11 batting runs. That's a single with an error check, so that's out to right center field. We check the right fielder on a 7, 8, or 9. No error on the play, and that's going to be a single to right field. Um, and the runners advance. Uh, you know what? We're going to... Let's see if the runner uh, makes it home. So we're going to send the runner from second and he has to we have to roll a um a one to seven here anything greater than seven he'll be out at the plate it's a five and ul washington will score as willie wilson hits a single into right field and we're going to get x plus one here which means he is going to score from second base so that's an rbi single from willie wilson and it's now 10 to 5 um, detroit over kansas city Brings up Hal McRae to the plate. McRae with an RBI single in his last at bat. 25 is not going to get it done, as that will be uh, 25 to a 14 batting runs as a fly out to left center field. Let's see if there's an error. No error on the plate, as the left fielder makes the catch, and that is out number two. 
no advancement from the runner there, um, <clears throat> Willie Wilson. And that'll bring up George Brett. Brett to the plate. He is uh, one for three. Fly it out in his last at bat. Uh, a 23 is going to be a ground out with an error check. So that's a ground out to short. And that will be an error on the shortstop. So anything that is a one will be an error. So we're going to go E6 and... Uh, let's just leave the the runner there. Uh, oh, he moves up to second base. Okay, uh, that's good. So two on now after the error, and only one out, and one already in for the Royals, and it will be Willie Aikens to the plate against Jack Morris. Uh, Aikens is a 12 batting runs, 14 to a 12 batting runs. It's going to be another base hit. This one up the middle. And let's see our running situation. So this guy's going to score uh, from second, and we'll hold Brett at second base. So uh, we're going to just say like this, and then we'll have to do this uh, by hand. So we'll score him. He'll get an RBI, and that will be a 10-6 to game now as the Royals put up two in the eighth. Let's go ahead and get a new pitcher in for Detroit, uh, just so as not to destroy uh, Morris's ERA. All right, and we are back, and it'll be Dave Rosma into the game. He has a 418 FIP. He can go 15 batters. We're going to insert him here into the eighth inning. One out in the eighth. We got two runs in. We have two on at the moment, and. It will be Pete Lecoq to the plate. He's a minus 10. And a 22 is going to be a big hit here as he doubles into left center field. That rolls all the way to the wall. That's going to score this run to come in. Uh, an unearned run. And this run here is going to go over to third base. Willie Aikens is just a 2, so he is not going to score. And this is going to be a double into center field so um, this guy's actually not going to score um, so he's going to stay there all right uh, nothing actually gets calculated finally until you go up here and you click on the do stats and all that kind of stuff so you can make all of your changes here um, and change whatever you need to and poke around and move things around uh, it gets finalized when you do do stats. It sort of looks at all of these statuses and then creates the stats off of that. So uh, RBI double from Pete Lecoq and the Kansas City Royals are storming back in this one. It's now 10 to 7. Um, Detroit over Kansas City, but uh, Kansas City still batting here in the eighth as they're giving it a good run. Only one out, and it will be a uh, quirk to the plate. He's got two on the pond in scoring position. And let's see if he can knock him in. A 34. 34 to a minus 3 is going to be a long single. And that is going to knock them both in as he hits one down the line. And that'll be a base hit. Uh, for Quirk, he's only a 2 uh, batting run. So we're going to give everybody uh, X plus 1 on this for the long single. And that's going to knock in both runs. He gets a 2 RBI single. They've scored 4 in the in the inning <laughs> sorry about that and a little sneeze uh, they scored four in the inning it's now 10 to 8 and Rosma is not providing any sort of relief uh, so it'll be Clint Hurdle to the plate Hurdle is 0 for 3 a 35 is gonna make him 0 for 4 I believe as he is a 9 batting run so that's gonna be a ground out that goes to short with one out, we have an opportunity for a double play. And so we're going to assume this out here at second base. And let's roll against Clint Hurdle's speed. That's a two. So a one or two, he'll be safe. Otherwise, he is out with a 6-4-3 double play. It's a one, and he just beats it out. So a little slow roller. And they can't turn two on the play. Uh, it's actually Fielder's Choice. And so we'll call it like that. And Hurdle keeps the inning alive with his very slow speed that's going to bring up Frank White to the plate Frank White 
uh, with a minus two batting runs. And Frank White is going to tag one for a home run. That is up and deep into left center field. And Frank White goes yard for a two-run jack. And that will... So one, two, three, four, five, six runs. That ties us up at two. If we click here, we get an extra eighth inning. And so we'll continue on here. And it'll be UL Washington to the plate with two outs and a runner, uh, no runners on. A 33. A 33 is going to be a fly out. And that will end the inning as he flies out to left center field. <clears throat> but one oh I'm sorry there are seven runs one two three four five six seven this one was an unearned run so I didn't see it so Kansas City takes an 11 to 10 lead and it's going to be Dan Quisenberry time and so let's get him into the game All right, so Dan Quisenberry coming into the game to close this one out. Uh, Quisenberry is the closing pitcher. Uh, he had, I don't know, 30 saves or so in 1980. Let's get this back here where it should be, and we will close out this game. Let's see if he can finish off the Detroit Tigers as a furious seven-run eighth inning has given Kansas City an 11-10 lead. Uh, he'll be facing off against Hebner, Thompson, and Summers, so heart of the order for the Tigers. He's pitching out of this first column, so we have quite a few more uh, opportunities for him to affect that bat. A 35 to Hebner, who is an 11. That's going to be a strikeout. So you can see this is our... Oh, sorry. So this is our extra eighth inning here, so we got sort of an extra eighth you can see right here. So this is the normal... Uh, one through nine in the eighth, and this is our sort of overflow as we go. Uh, Ten batters came up to bat in the eighth. Uh, brings up uh, Jason Thompson. He is 0 for 4. Uh, he's got a 24 here, and a 24 on column one is nothing. So for Thompson, who's a minus five, a 24 is going to be a strikeout. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Quisenberry. Not known as a big strikeout pitcher, but uh, he's getting a couple here. And that will bring up uh, Summers as the last hope. Summers, as you can see, is three for four. He's got three singles, and he may have another here. Let's see. He's a 21. 34 to a 21 he is going to be a flyout. So he would have had a single in most other uh, instances. But he has a flyout that goes out to left center field. It's a can of corn, and he is going to put that one away for out number three. And this game is over as the Kansas City Royals come back in a huge way with seven runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, and they take an 11-10 to lead uh, and then close it out in the ninth over the Detroit Tigers from 1980. This is using on-base baseball, uh, using the, uh, you can see here, this is the roster sheet set with uh, that's been printed, and so you have all of the players that you need here, plus the uh, game engine chart and you can purchase that I'll put the uh, link in the description where you can go and purchase that set it's 20 bucks uh, to get the printed version and everything you need to play 1980 is in the set so uh, you'll be able to to play that out and then you can get Green Fox by going to uh, Facebook groups and searching for Green Fox Green Fox the G R E E N F O X all one word and you can join the uh, group and get the free downloads. Um, Mike's done a great job uh, with Green Fox. And basically, you come over here at the end of the game. Uh, let's turn this off. So we'll turn off the visibility here. And then you can see here that uh, when you do stats, then what it does gives you some things over here. And basically, you can... See all of the player stats here, and it just calculates all of your stats for you. And so you can go in and you can assign different things here. So Rosma is going to get the uh, loss, I believe, and we are going to give uh, 
Oh, we didn't insert Quisenberry into the game. So that's why that happens there. Um, okay. Sorry, I didn't insert Dan Quisenberry into the game. Uh, so we got our players here. He's going to take the loss. He's going to get the win. And he will get the uh, save with a game finished. And then so you can just sort of uh, add those in as needed. And then you can see how every player is done in their bats and RBIs and all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, super cool here. Um, you can do a prep so that you can print this out to PDF. Just basically um, you do the selection. You print the selection is all it's done. It's selected everything. And then you print that out and you can share those stats uh, with everybody. Uh, you can assign these errors. Um, I think here it's being assigned automatically, so there's no need to, to do anything with that. Um, <clears throat> you can show and hide, you know, extra pictures or whatever. So play around with it. It's, it's really cool, super cool. And especially when you're doing a replay, it gives you all the stats calculated for uh, the cumulative stats and the game-by-game -game stats. So really, really nice uh, functionality here. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, sorry for all of you Detroit Tiger fans. They had it in hand, and uh, it was Dave Rosma who <laughs> gives up uh, most, of the, uh, most of the runs here at the end of the inning at one, two, three. Uh, he gave up three runs himself that were charged to himself, but uh, also I believe he gave up this run here uh, and just couldn't quite uh, close the door on the very talented Kansas City lineup. All right, uh, I think that's it from here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.